In this video, we will review anemia caused by decreased red cell production. In a previous video, we reviewed the anemias caused by increased red cell destruction. In those cases, the low hematocrit and hemoglobin are sensed as hypoxia in the kidney, which in turn is stimulated to produce increased levels of erythropoietin. The marrow is stimulated, nuclear and cytoplasmic maturation take place normally, and new reticulocytes are released into the circulation. The hallmark of red cell destruction is anemia with increased reticulocyte count. But what happens when the kidney doesn't make enough erythropoietin or the marrow can't respond? Then you get decreased production anemias, the focus of this video. The simplest case is renal failure. In renal failure, erythropoietin production is limited there is no erythroid hyperplasia, no exuberant reticulocyte response, and you end up with anemia with a low reticulocyte count, the classic pattern of decreased production anemia. Now let's turn to problems with the marrow itself. Instead of having normal cytoplasmic processes that result in copious hemoglobin production, you might have abnormal hemoglobin production, either because of iron shortage or poor incorporation of iron into heme, or a thalassemia, a genetic disorder of globin production. Or you might have disordered nuclear maturation, as seen in the megaloblastic anemias associated with either folate or B12 deficiencies. Or you might have decreased stem cells, resulting in hypoplastic or aplastic anemia. Or the marrow could be invaded by stuff that shouldn't be there clumps of metastatic tumor cells, fibrosis, granulomas or storage cells, or leukemia blast cells that effectively crowd out, take proliferative advantage over the normal marrow elements. Now let's take a quick look at some of the clues that we use to predict what type of decreased production anemia is at play as we construct a differential diagnosis for a patient. In the case of renal failure, the marrow is relatively normal looking, but with a decrease in erythroid precursors. The cells in the peripheral blood are of normal size, normal mean cell volume, MCV, normocytic, and are usually relatively normal looking. The diagnosis is made by the elevated BUN and creatinine. When hemoglobin synthesis is compromised, either by defective globin production or decreased iron incorporation into heme, the cytoplasm of maturing erythroid precursors in the marrow is irregular and ratty looking, and the resulting peripheral red cells are also irregular and small, decreased MCV, microcytic. The most common diagnoses associated with these microcytic anemias are iron deficiency and thalassemias. Less often, the anemia of chronic inflammation or sideroblastic anemia. Iron studies and hemoglobin electrophoresis are often diagnostic. The combination of erythroid hyperplasia with decreased reticulocyte count classifies this group of anemias as showing ineffective erythropoiesis. When the normal nuclear maturation is disrupted, the precursors in the marrow display a dyssynchrony where the cytoplasm is filling with hemoglobin while the nucleus lags behind, remains large and open instead of getting smaller and condensed. This pattern is referred to as megaloblastic maturation and affects the myeloid as well as the erythroid precursors in the marrow. In the peripheral blood, the red cells are ovalocytic and large, increased MCV, macrocytic. The best clue in the peripheral blood to a megaloblastic process in the marrow is the presence of macroovalocytes and polymorphonuclear granulocytes with four or five or even more lobes. Megaloblastic anemias are commonly caused by folate or B12 deficiency or as a reaction to drugs used in cancer chemotherapy that interfere with nuclear maturation. These anemias are also examples of ineffective erythropoiesis. When stem cells are in short supply, the bone marrow is relatively empty 
and the diagnosis is aplastic or hypoplastic anemia. In the peripheral blood, the red cells can be either normocytic or macrocytic. The polymorphonuclear granulocytes are reduced, but not hyperlobed as seen in megaloblastic anemias. A biopsy is needed to assess bone marrow cellularity. When the marrow is invaded by cells that shouldn't be there, like leukemia cells, granulomas, storage cells, fibrosis, or metastatic cancer, it takes a bone marrow biopsy to find out what's wrong in the marrow. The red cells in the peripheral blood are usually normocytic, but may show an occasional teardrop form. Immature precursors may also appear in the periphery. This ominous pattern is called myelothysic. In another video, we will set up a useful framework for sorting out all of these anemias, starting with the reticulocyte count and the MCV.